your journey can only begin when the self-doubts stop. The first step is harnessing your bravery within. Believing in you is your host, John D. Wallace. Good day to you all. My name is Sean, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another weight loss series episode of Bravery Within. I wanted to take just a couple seconds here to say thank you so very much. Uh, a lot more of you folks there are subscribing to my YouTube page. It seems like that's where everybody's going to get to my podcast anymore. Uh, so I'd like to say thank you so very much for being subscribing, to share them. Um, I, I, I'm seeing that the episodes are being shared a little bit more. I'm hoping that you're telling your friends and family all about the podcast because you guys are making it bigger and bigger and I can't thank you enough for it. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for listening. And I I keep getting questions about today's episode about how I work, you know, carbs and stuff into my own personal weight loss journey. So even though I've covered this a couple times, I thought I would make a whole episode about this (laughs) and drive everybody crazy because I'm sure you're going to be hungry because let me tell you, as I was making up my notes for this one here, what I wanted to talk about, oh, good grief, was I hungry at the end of them. (laughs) So episode 31 is, oh, for the love of carbs. And... Some of you are out there saying, oh, yes. And, and I have to admit, while I was writing up my notes to this and stuff there, there was a tear rolling down my cheek. <laughs> it was like, oh, my goodness. I didn't realize how much I had given up to be able to stay on my own weight loss journey. Now, don't get me wrong. I am absolutely happy with the results that I've gotten. And, of course, it's just like everybody else. I wish that I could just snap my fingers and, and oh guess what wow you just lost 300 pounds there and now you can go out and buy better clothes and you're never going to gain weight again well unfortunately science has not come up with that pill yet and so i just have to do it the hard way and keep chucking along but when i was writing up uh all the notes and stuff here for the podcast it I, it came to me as like really I, I i guess i had made so many changes now now take into account i'm in month 21 of my weight loss journey and i'm proud of how far i've come you know i'm, I'm 220 plus pounds down you know i'm five pants sizes down and i'm working on my sixth one right now i'm three shirt sizes smaller uh and it was, it was like you know, the weird part was is football season fired up and i have my green bay packer jersey in the closet and i can hear half of you out there and I'm sorry but I'm a Packer fan (laughs) and I had um, a 4XL shirt in there now keep in mind I haven't been able to wear this for probably oh goodness sakes probably close to a decade Uh, kind of broke my heart it just was collecting dust in the in the closet and I, I, I thought okay you know what I have done so well and I wanted to root for my team And it was like, okay, I'm just going to try it on just to see if it fit. And I put it on and lo and behold, it fit. I had not been able to get into it, like I said, for probably close to a decade. And it was like, oh my goodness. Those are, those are the wins that help propel you forward to stay on your weight loss journey. And let me tell you, man, that motivated me big time. And it was like, that is three shirt sizes that I have lost in 21 months. And as I was so proud of myself, I'm still proud of myself. And it's like, I cannot believe how far I've come. And it it helped because I I write up all my notes and stuff there and and they're sitting on the screen in front of me. So I kind of remember what to talk about. (laughs) I have a horrible memory and I'll be the first one to admit it. So I didn't have my notes sitting on the screen. I wouldn't be able to get through a podcast. I'll be honest. But as I was prepping for it before I fired up the the recorder here and stuff here to start talking to you guys, I I started looking and it's like, oh, these are the loaded carbs that I I gave up. And like I said, in the first probably three, four, maybe even five months of the beginning of the weight loss journey, I was detoxifying. And let me tell you, it was miserable. And if anybody tells you, oh, it's only going to take a week or two, man, they're full of hooey booey. And and maybe maybe you'll be lucky enough where it is only a week or two. But for me, it, it took nearly five months for my body to detoxify and get rid of the cravings that I was running into. And, and let me let me tell you, it was just like, holy cow. And, and I was drafting up my notes and I was looking at all the list of all the carbs and, and all the bad foods and, and everything else that I'd given up. And it was just like, I, 
I, I just like, wow, I, I can't believe I gave all of this up. And as, as I was tr prepping for it and stuff there, you know, I go online and I try to do a little bit of research there because I want to give you guys the best information that I can. I may not be 100% good at it or it may not be 100% right, but this is the information that I can find and this is the information that I use for my own weight loss journey. So this stuff is tried, true, and tested. And, and I don't wanna say anything or recommend anything or give information out on something that I haven't done because if there's side effects, I, I definitely don't wanna tell you guys about it. You guys are my extended family. I wanna make sure that I'm giving you all the best information that I can. And, and as I was looking at all this stuff and it was like, I, I, I don't even know how my body processed everything that I was eating. And there's many, many times that I'll sit down and think, oh my goodness, I am like starving to death today. And when I get those days, I make sure that it's protein heavy. So that way, if I do take in more calories than what I'm, that I want to, it's all protein. So it's all good for me. It's not like I'm just blowing my whole journey right out the window. I'm, I'm not, you know, carb loading up on everything. I'm not sitting down and eating three or four pounds of French fries or having, you know, several, you know, gallons of pop or, you know, or, or my all-time favorite, I am an Italian nut. Oh my goodness sakes. When it comes to pasta, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I probably better never go to Italy because I'll probably close it down. <laughs> I'll never be allowed in. I'll lose my passport and I'll never get to be able to go back. But pasta is my weakness, pasta and breads. And if I would, I'm, I'm almost positive that I would have grown up in Italy, I would have exploded by age 30 and there would have been nothing left to me. It just, just, you know, little parts all over the place. And I, I used to do a lot of cooking. And let's be honest, as I was, you know, growing, you know, basically I was married, raising my son and everything else as family, bills, cars, everything outside, it all takes money. And it, it come down to the point to where the family budget only goes so far. And one of the first things that typically get cut is the food budget because it's like, okay, well, if I find some, you know, like some noodles or I find spaghetti sauce or I find Alfredo sauce or anything down the processed aisles in the middle of the, of the grocery store, typically you can get your budget to stretch out further. And there was many times that you know, there was kids, next door neighbor kids, friends of my son and stuff, they would come over to the house and eat with us. Well, in that case, you know, I had enough, you know, basically to budget for us, but then all of a sudden I got three more youngsters and sometimes teenagers, we got into the teenage years and we all know how much <laughs> teenage boys can eat and they would just eat me out of house and home. So I had to, you know, basically stretch out our food budget to try to be able to, because I, I never turned anybody away from the table. And there was times where there wasn't enough food uh, to basically cover everything. So I made sure that the kids ate and I didn't have supper that night or, or whatever. And you would think, Sean, how is that possible? You were over 300 pounds overweight. Good point, no arguments there. But I did skip meals from time to time to make sure that my family had enough to eat, make sure my son was taken care of and his friends were taken care of. So to do that, we had to, we, I had to stretch out the food budget. There was just no other way around it. And at the time there, I mean, granted now we're going back, you know, 10, sometimes, well, let's see here. Yeah, about 10, 15 years. Um, there was, you know, you could buy lots and lots of noodles, you know, the big bags of them for 80, 90 and a dollar. Um, 80, 80 cents, 90 cents or a dollar and you could really, really, really make a stretch. And that's basically what I did. I made a lot of goulashes. I made a lot of hamburger helper, you know, anything to try to stretch it out because you still want some flavor with it, but those are loaded up carts because they had noodles in them. And I love noodles. So it was very, very easy for me to actually do uh, baking or cooking and stuff there because it was very very because that's what I liked and that's that's what we ate the bad part is I knew it wasn't the healthiest for us and I and I had my heels dug in because I just absolutely wasn't going to eat vegetables and I, I just rarely served them but in the in the hot dishes or the goulashes or whatever I made I always made sure I threw in some corn and peas or something like that so at least there was something a little more positive <laughs> to it um, so I can actually say, yeah, we're eating a little bit healthy, but then, you know, you always had to have something on the side. So I'd have bread or I'd have biscuits or, or something like that, mainly because it was all comfort food, because everything that I was going through was super, super stressful. Life is stressful and it was just easier to eat my feelings. So as I was figuring out how I wanted to talk to you guys about carbs today, I was looking at it and I go, 
you know, it's like, okay, I give up. It, here's the list that I was able to come up with. Um, and just to kind of show you, these are the things I gave up. You know, I gave up most candy. I mean, I rarely, I mean, I didn't have a lot of candy bars before, but I'll be honest. I mean, we're coming up on Halloween and we always have those little, little bite-sized, fun-sized candy bars, you know, and they're wonderful. I love them. I miss them. I do have to say, I do miss those. Um, but I know that if I start eating one, I'm going to have 10 of them. It's kind of like a, a, like a, ch a potato chip. You can't have just one. Whoever come up with that marketing logo and slogan like that, man, they're brilliant because they're right. You can't eat just one. <laughs> Those guys are brilliant. But I gave up candy. Um, sugary breakfast cereals, I gave up. Uh, I, I, I mean, my all-time favorite was grape nuts. I love grape nuts, but I always ended up putting a little bit of sugar on it there to give it a little bit more flavor and stuff there. But I love those. But yeah, I mean, you'd give up all the sugar sugary breakfast cereals, white pasta. Like I said, I'm an Italian freak. It's like, oh my goodness sakes. That is probably one of the hardest things. And, I, and I'll be honest, especially now that we're coming up on winter again, fall is setting in. And, and I'm used to making those comfort foods. I'm used to using pasta for everything. And I struggle, I'm not gonna lie. I'm 21 months into my journey. You would think this would be a lot easier. And for the most part it is, but there's still times. It was just like, I'd like to just sit down and make a nice hot dish because it's comfort food. And, and, and I still struggle because it's like, that's all I want. And, and, I, and it's like, okay, how do I get around this? So we've done good about, you know, Alex and I have done good about finding some, you know, lower carb pastas. Uh, we found different ways of trying to, use, you know, for is Alfredo sauce is wonderful. It's like, I could just drink. It's kind of like ranch dressing. I just drink it, <laughs> which we all know that ain't good for you. But I, I could sit down and just do that. But we're doing, we work very hard to try to find new ways of coming up with uh, you know the sauces and stuff there that are that are lower calorie lower carb you know lower salt you know you know and it's a struggle because it's kind of like that's all you want is the pasta and the bread um, white rice is another one and stuff there white bread uh, I love all of those and of course you know those are all loaded in bad carbs and it's like really everything that I love is is all bad for you <laughs> but when I look at it and I think about it, there's a reason why I was over 300 pounds overweight is because I love this stuff so much, I just never stopped eating it. And instead of trying to basically ration myself down and say, okay, no, you're only gonna have this much, I just, it's just like, no, I'm gonna eat until I'm full. And of course, all of that stuff's bad for you. The cookies, the muffins, anything baked is like, I, I used to be in the kitchen a lot, I, you know, and I loved making cookies. Uh, fast fudgy cookies, you know, blueberry muffins, you know, uh, cakes, you know, I would make all of that stuff. And in the days before today, which I'm not saying that it's any better, it's still very, very difficult money wise and living paycheck to paycheck. But back then it was even tighter because there was three of us instead of just my son and I, my ex-wife was also there too. And you, you just had to budget in and you had to budget in for kids and everything else. So the way you did it is I did a lot of baked goodies. So that way when they come in, I could give them a sweet treat or something like that to, you know, they typically would have a bad day or they'd have a rough day at school or something at home is bothering them. So you, I always try to have something around for them uh, to basically brighten their spirits up. I make M&M cookies or chocolate chip cookies or snickerdoodles or just anything like that you know because it would basically it would bring up it would put a smile on their face and bring up their spirits a little bit but the problem is is it sat around the house all the time and guess what i would go over oh well there's one oh no 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 oh there's a second one bah, 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 bah. You know, and i would just continue to eat the stuff and it, it's as much as i absolutely loved it it's like it was bad for me but it also helped out my own mental state because things were tough and i wasn't you know as happy as i was hoping things weren't turning out the way i wanted them to so i turned to food um, potato chips, um, oh my goodness sakes, any kind of chips is like, holy smokes. And then you, then, then you would get the dipping sauces for it. You know, it's like, oh, that's just a whole lot of heaven. I know by now you probably have tuned in to try to figure out how to avoid carbs. And I've done nothing but push you into the enemy encampment. <laughs> Because I'm going to be honest, I'm sitting here 14 minutes into the show and I'm starving. Because <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, I, that's all I want now is all this stuff. And, and I know I can't have it. But the thing that shows me the most is how far I've come. You know, 
it's like you know, the sugary juices i didn't really have a lot but i would have them i switched that over thank goodness to like crystal lights and stuff like that there something that basically has no calories but it gave flavor and to me i can make up huge pictures of it and keep the cost down so i ended up going through something like that there sodas i i did my best to stay away from because we all know those are chock full of sugar but these are all things that I, I didn't even realize that I had given up. I have come so far in 21 months. It was like, holy cow, I've given all this up. And, and yes, you know it, because once in a while, you still get those cravings. You still want them. And, and I honestly think that I'm going to crave them probably for the rest of my life. I don't think those cravings are ever going to fully go away. But the cravings went from ruling my life. And, and making me feel that that's all I could eat and I had to eat a ton of them down to probably 95% of that is gone. There's always that rah, rah, rah in the back of your head that that stupid little voice that says rah, 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 have those cookies, rah, 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 have the lemon meringue pie that I just absolutely adore. And it's like, you can't have them. And uh, maybe once I get to myself to where my weight is, is where I'm happy and where I want to get to, and then I can start introducing a little bit of the carbs again. But the thing that scares me the most is, is I have great willpower. I'm not going to argue that one there. And people ask me all the time, how, how can you, <laughs> how, how can you do this? You, you can just walk by food and you're not, and it like, it doesn't even phase you or bother you. The problem is it does phase me and it does bother me. That's why sometimes I have to walk in a speed walk past it because I know if I sit over there and, oh, wow, that looks good. Or, oh, I wish I could have a piece of that. Well, guess what? Right in, you know, right into my hand. And it's like, okay, I'm going to eat it now. Because it's kind of like if you get into a vehicle and you absolutely like it, if you're into it, you know, you're going to buy it. If you don't get into it, you can walk away from it. And food it's kind of the same way for me and so I do my very best to try to stay away from it as much as I can I is I love it don't get me wrong we have to have it to live no 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 disagreements there uh, but what you put into your body is a big thing and I used to get so mad at people would tell me well your body's a temple you know only put the good things in because then you get good out and I used to get so mad at them it's like stop telling me things like that because it's not true and then I had to go back and eat crow because unfortunately in this case, they're correct. And I found that by putting in more, more protein and, and better food, I felt better. I functioned better. And not that my memory got any better. My memory's so horrible. <laughs> I'm sure my family's out there going, yep, Sean, it's horrible. You, I'm shocked you even remember what you had for breakfast. Well, to be honest, I don't. <laughs> it's like, I'm just a lost cause, but that's okay. You know what? That's me. But I, I was just looking at when I was writing all these down, it was like, holy cow, I, I, I didn't even realize that I missed I didn't realize that I missed the cookies and the brownies and the lemon meringue pie. It was kind of like, wow, what happened? You know, because I could go out and I would make homemade white bread. And you could get it to where you can buy the frozen stuff, which, you know, let's be honest, I'm lazy. And I didn't want to have to really work at it. I've made it, you know, from scratch all the way. And I've done well with it. But you can buy the frozen white bread and you just put it in the bread pan and you give it all day to raise. And then you come home, throw it in the oven 20 minutes later and you got hot, fresh bread. Or you can turn it into buns or anything like that and it was just like those are those were my go-to things i'd slap a bunch of you know strawberry jelly or grape jelly on it and you know just just load it up even worse you know you already got a you know a wonderfully tasting thing but it's a bad thing for you so let's just add some more to it and just make it worse for you <laughs> and it was like okay i gotta quit this i didn't realize how much i'd given up and i know i keep saying that but i don't regret it I, I have come so far. I have made so many changes to my life. And I honestly think that if you, if you were to start your own weight loss journey, I think you would be happy with yourself. But the thing that I, you know, I want to tell you right away and stuff there, and I know this is contradictory and you're going to probably go, Sean, what's wrong with you? And there's probably going to be doctors out there that are going to be mad at me. There's probably going to be dietitians. There's probably going to be you know, guys that are in the gym that are saying this and they're all going to be mad at me. But if your mind is not 100% committed to doing the weight loss journey, don't even try it. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I want you in the worst way to jump on your own journey. I want you to go through it and I want you to get to the finish line like where I'm heading to. But one thing that I've learned with all of the, 
the fad diets that come out and the yo-yo dieting that you do, my mind was never set. I didn't want to be on those diets. I did not want to restrict myself back. And if you're not ready to make that commitment, then I suggest you don't do it. Now, I know there's going to be so many people mad at me. And I realize there's some people out there that have health issues and they have to do it. I'm not arguing that point. I'm not saying this is an easy road. What I'm trying to tell you is I want you to be mentally ready to for this road. It is a very long and a very, very difficult road to go down. But I'm telling you this. Once you get started, you get through the cravings, you get through the withdrawals, and you start eating the better foods, and even like me, I worked in supplements to help me take off the weight faster. It helps with the hunger. It protects my muscles. You know, it burns fat, you know, fat faster. I, I buy the, you know, certain things. I'm, I'm lucky because I've got a heck of a good manager that I work with down there um, at, at, at my supplement place that it's, he's helped me through it. And I honestly believe if you start down that road, you're going to be glad that you did. And whatever it takes, and I've had plenty of people tell me, I don't want to be that restrictive. I don't want, I think it's too hard. Okay, that's fine. No arguments there. Start at half power. Just start, dip your toe in, but make forward progress. And as you get going, you may find that, oh, wow, okay, I'm losing weight. This isn't as hard as I thought. And then, then continue to make the changes. If that's what it is, just start at half power. Don't go all in like what, like what I did. Like I said, I've thumb on the waist it right off the cliff and I just did it one night. I mean, uh, January 1st, 2022, that was D-Day for me. That's the day that I did it. I didn't care. And I just dove off the cliff and said I did it. And like I said before, I didn't do any research. I wasn't prepped. I didn't have anything in my house. Nothing. And I know, and I've talked to my son. He's heard the podcast. And he said, yep. He said, I thought you had, you went crazy. I was ready to lock you up. Because I just went through and started throwing everything away that was carb loaded. Well, I know which stuff was bad for me. I mean, it was no doubt because I knew because I bought it. <laughs> and I knew that if I continued to have that in the house, that it was going to basically derail my weight loss journey. And I wanted to this time lose the weight. Now, do I wish that I could just snap my fingers and it was all the weight's gone? Well, of course. We live in an instant gratification world. You have to be able to text somebody or you know email somebody and get an instant answer back. I mean, that's why there's all these notifications that are on our cell phones. And as soon as it dings, somebody's checking it because you need that instant gratification. And this weight loss journey is not instant. You have to understand that you have to be in it for the long haul. That's just really what it comes down to. So I knew that with carbs, carbs were my friend. Uh, they, they were the best thing that had ever happened to me in my head, not my body wise, because it was the worst thing for my body, but in my head, they were the best thing that was for me. And I knew that the pasta, the bread, the candy, the cookies, the muffins, the brownies, and I knew I needed all of those to get through because my mental state was horrible. I mean, I my depression was absolutely tanked. I mean, it was it was bad. I, I really didn't didn't really care to get up to go to work the next day. I really didn't care about going out with friends. I mean, I know I had a really really bad attitude. I'm not arguing that point. I harbored grudges against people. I don't even hardly remember the people, let alone what the grudge was about, but I was harboring them. I had all this toxicity and, and, and all this negativity that was inside of me and I had to purge it before I got started. So I purged all of that. Now it didn't happen overnight. It's taken me the whole time that I've been on this weight loss journey, 21 months so far, to purge all of that negativity and that bad stuff out of me. But the carbs had to go right along with it too. And it breaks my heart to say that because I would like to be able to tell you, continue to eat the pasta, continue to have the French bread and the rolls and the, you know, all the good stuff, anything that makes you feel good, continue to have it. I would absolutely love to be able to tell you that. Unfortunately, reality rears its ugly head as it always does and says, no, you can't have it. <laughs> and it's just like, I would just like to beat you up for just a minute here because I just want some carbs. But honestly, once you start down the road and you start basically detoxifying from the carbs, 
it actually does get easier. Now, do I have I completely cut out pasta and rice and everything? Absolutely not. I eat more rice, but I try to keep to the brown ones, and, and I'm not that great at it. I still have some because I restrict my carbs back so far that I bottom out constantly. It's like you run out of energy. You just you just power down. It's just and you're just sitting. There's been times I just sit at my desk and I can't function. I literally cannot function. I can't focus. I can't think. I can't move. I can't do anything because I run so low. And I know that's not good for me. And I'm not recommending that you do. But that's my way of saying, okay, now I need to bring up my carbs a little bit. So what that I use that as basically a gauge of, okay, I need to get some more in me so I know I'm not running too high. My body is burning through it plus you know all the fat that I still have on my body it's burning through it so I need to replenish and add a little bit and I've learned that Friday nights and stuff there I, I do try to because it's Friday nights are out with my family and we enjoy and we go to a restaurant and we have fun and I Friday nights I, I, I let back on the reins a little bit not much but a little bit I, I allow myself to enjoy a little bit now is it still it's probably still 70% protein, but I do allow a little bit more carbs in because typically by that time I've gone all week and, I, and I'm run so low on carbs, there's just nothing left. So I have to work in a little bit back into it again. And the weekends and stuff there typically will not be quite so I mean I'm restrictive on it but I don't eat quite as much I back off on what I eat so by the time I get all the way back around to Fridays most of the time my body says you know what there's a little white flag it's waving I'm done you need to put some carbs in me and that's how I know that I'm regulating myself right now is that the healthiest way probably not are there dietitians that are going to yell at me oh I'm sure they'd love to get their hands around my neck to say stop saying these things because it's not the best I'm not telling you that this is the best I am not the smartest person I didn't go to school for this stuff all i'm doing is just trying to pass on some information that's it this is how i'm doing it and it's working for me i'm over 220 pounds down in 21 months that's an incredible amount of weight and to stick with it this long is 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 incredible and i'm proud of myself for coming that far and that's why i think if you were to get started and start working out you know working out the carbs start switching over to more protein um you can work in vegetables there's all kinds of vegetables i think i got a list here further down in my notes here this is what the good carb vegetables are you still have to have carbs don't get me wrong you have to have them that's the energy that your brain works on and it keeps your vital systems working because there's, there's actually, there's two type of carbs that everybody knows. And then there's a new carb, the, the way they're doing it. And I'm still learning about this one. So I haven't got this all figured out yet. But I do know that there's two sets of carbs that have been around forever. There's simple carbs and there's complex carbs. Simple carbs, also called basically sugars, are made up of one and two sugar molecules and are quickly digested and absorbed through the body. You burn through them real, real fast. They're basically like when you need to pick yourself up and get rocking and rolling, that's what you do. That's why people turn to candy bars and they turn to pop and everything else because they need a quick, basically jolt to the system. Um, anything like that there, that's gonna be your simple carbs. Your complex carbs are made up of long chains of sugar molecules and take longer to digest and absorb. Complex carbohydrates are found in whole grains, vegetables, and like legumes. There's all kinds of good carbs that you can have. And that's why those take longer so you stay full longer. And I know you probably have heard that many, many, many times. Well, I used to hear it too all the time and it would drive me nuts. It's like, would you stop telling me that because you guys are just, no way. There's no way that can be true. Okay, more crow I had to eat because darn it, they were right. <laughs> But there's a new one that's coming out. And like I said, I don't have this one figured out yet. Um, it's basically called net carbs. And I'm still working on it. And if you are if you have questions, look it up. Or talk to your dietitian or your doctor. They're, they're much smarter than I am. And they'll be able to help you through it. But what I learned is net carbs are calculated by subtracting the fiber content from the total carb content of the food. Fiber is a type of complex carb that the body cannot digest. So it doesn't contribute to the total carb count. So that's a new one. And I, like I said, I don't know much about it. I'm still working on it. And I will try to dig into it and then bring it up on another episode once I get it all figured out myself. Um, but th those are the type of carbs that you kind of, you know, you want to watch out for. So how many, you know, th then I went to work a little bit more. How many carbs a day do you take in but still lose weight? 
because you have to find that happy medium. There's, to be very, very honest, you have to be very, very careful because like me, you know, and I'll be honest, I was, I, I did, I've told you guys, I didn't do any research before I dove into my weight loss journey. I just, boom, in it went. And I, I didn't plan, I didn't know any of this stuff. This all, a lot of this stuff I'm learning as I'm talking on my podcast. And, but like I said, I try to, I don't go to just one area, one medical area to get this information. I go to several to make sure that the information is good for me and good for you. You guys, like I said, are my extended family and I want nothing but the best for you. So to, basically how many carbs a day to lose weight? It's generally recommended for your daily carb intake between 20 and 100 grams per day. However, a low carb or ketogenic diet may be, they may tell you to be more restrictive. And in that case, instead of 20 to 100 grams, they want you to be restricted to 20 to 50 grams per day. Now take into account, you have to take into account what you're doing, what you're working, you know, what, you know, basically your body size, who you are, how fast you're burning through stuff. You have to be very, very careful with, with the carbs. And I learned that, I'll be honest, I learned that the very, very hardest way I think you could probably learn. Cause like I said, I didn't do any research. I just dove in and boom, there it was. I just, okay, this is what we're doing. So kind of like carbs between 20 and 100 grams, what they are saying also um, is the caloric intake and stuff there. Basically, you should take in 45 to 65% of your daily calories from carbs because like I said carbs are the part that gives you the energy and I realize you're probably thinking well wait a minute here why am I going to be taking in extra carbs if I'm trying to lose weight well keep in mind that if you go too restrictive on your carbs or too restrictive on anything your body body basically goes into starvation mode and then you don't lose any weight then it's like plateauing you're dead in the water and in fact you can gain weight and, and I had to learn right out of the shotgun. Granted, I, had, I, I still have a lot of fat to lose, but when I was started this, I had a lot of fat to lose. So it kind of helped pull me through on those things, but I still bottomed out and I didn't realize how awful I would feel because I bottomed out. And it took a while to figure out, okay, this is where I'm at. I'm only taking in, you know, basically when I started, I started and I only took in 1200 calories per day. And let me tell you, when you go from seven to 9,000 calories per day, and you go to 1,200, oh, let me tell you, you're gonna have some withdrawals and you are gonna be cranky, because I was cranky. I'll be honest, I could have ripped the door off of my truck some days because I was so hungry and I was trying to change and I was just bound and determined I was not going to let my body win on this one. I had to make the changes because I was doing it for me. You have to be clear on why you're doing your weight loss. You have to be so very clear about this because you don't want to do it for anybody else. Because if that person leaves, then what you're doing it for is, is nothing. And then you might gain weight because then you're going to go back to your old way. You're going to gain weight. You have to do the weight loss for yourself. I can't stress that enough. And that's exactly what I'm doing for. Yes, I want to be around for my son and I want to be around for his whole life, my family, my friends. I want to be around for all of them. I want to be there to help them and I want to be a part of their lives. But let me tell you, this whole weight loss journey is for me. And that's not being conceited. That's not being selfish or nothing. I have to protect my body and and do the right thing so I can be around for everybody else. And it's not the easiest thing. I told you, I struggle every day and I struggled while writing the notes for this podcast because it's like ah I just want the brownies and the cookies and the pop and the everything and it's like this was a dangerous one for me to talk about because like I said I didn't realize how much I had given up and and I always have my family that comes over and they tell me and my good friends and stuff there they always tell me well you have come so far you have lost weight your face is thinned out you know you don't eat anything like you used to and it's like oh whatever god I'm so sick of you guys tell me that and I know they do it for motivational reasons and I love them for it don't get me wrong I have a wonderful support structure I couldn't ask for a better one these guys have been so so supportive and they're there for me every step of the way. I couldn't, I couldn't be luckier. 
but there's just times it's like I think you guys are full of fooey because it's like you, there's no way I, I don't I, I just don't see it and let me tell you it took I think it was probably 14 months before I finally started to see how much weight I had lost. Now, yes, I saw it in my pants falling off and my shirt's getting smaller and I could sit in chairs that I couldn't previously sit in. I could move around. I was better. But those are all the little wins that, that I, I, I absolutely love. And you have to have those. You have to have use those to motivate yourself. That's what it comes down to. But they would tell me, yes, we can see the difference. And I would sit there and go, no, you can't, because I can't see it. <laughs> and then they would go, yes, we can, Sean. So just be happy and take the compliment. I'm not good at compliments, let's just be honest. But you have to watch about how many calories you take in. Because now I'm up to about, I try to hold myself from, you know, I started at 1,200. And I try to hold myself between 17 and 1,800 calories per day. That's where I try to hold myself to. And I do very well at it. Um, I'm very restrictive on a lot of stuff. But I can tell as I as I continue on, I can actually feel when I'm low in something. You, it's amazing because your body changes. You start listening to your body, and it's like, okay, well, I'm low low on carbs, or I'm low on sugars, or I'm low on just anything. And you just have just a little bit. Sometimes just by bumping it by 50 or 100 extra calories of something, will make a monstrous difference. And you feel better, you operate better, or everything there, and you just continue on. It's not that you're failing by any way, shape, or form, because you're not. It's just you might be more active that day or doing more things or or you may not have taken in as many calories as you are because like I said I round up everything so if something says it's 80 calories I round it up to 100 because I am not a math whiz I stink at math <laughs> so what I do is you know I may say okay yep I've hit my 1700 calories but I may have only taken in 1550 so I'm short on calories but I would rather be heavy to make sure on the calorie count to make sure that I don't go over. And that's how I get myself through it. Because like I said, I stink at math. So if I can round it off to hundreds, 100, 200, 300, 400, it's easier for me to remember that's what I'm doing. And that's my current count for eating. And to me, that's that's been the best way. Now remember all your proteins, I'm 90% protein on my weight loss journey. Your proteins factor in differently because you know meats are meat, chicken, ham, you know, hamburger, all of that stuff and everything there, you're, you, you have the proteins and they're going to, you know, basically hold you over because you're, you're going to feel fuller longer. So yes, you may take in a lot of calories, but it's all proteins. So for me, it's working. And I just learned to listen to my body when it tells me something's short or something's not quite right. This is basically, okay, well, let's do this then. So what I wanted to do also is I wanted to tell you basically give you some good foods that have healthy carbs in them. These are the things that you're going to want to put in your house. And I, and I do I do pretty good with these. I don't, I'm not perfect at them. Some of them are vegetables and we all know I don't eat vegetables. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of good healthy carbs on here that, that you can work with. And these are just some of them that they recommended. So I started writing these down to try to help you. 100% whole wheat pasta 100% whole wheat white bread or wheat bread not white bread see I see I went right back to white bread <laughs> it's just like ah that's what I want <laughs> but wheat bread it's got to be wheat bread um white potatoes with the skin um the, those are healthy carbs for you. I I looked at it and I go seriously those are healthy for you? but actually it is they actually you know your glycemic index your sugar and stuff there is going to go through the roof but everything else will kind of make up for it multi-grain hot cereal barley, oats, oatmeal, uh, anything like that. Just make sure you don't add the sugars and stuff to it, but that's actually really, really good because it'll fill you up and it actually helps you burn things. Yams, uh, brown rice, um, that's another good one. We try to eat a lot of brown rice to, to keep things uh, a little bit healthier for you. Uh, beans and lentils, um, to me, I'm not a fan of them, but I did find that those are actually healthy carbs, so I wanted to talk about them. Uh, quinoa, uh, not a fan of it, but hey, if you like it, go for it. Uh, pumpkin, butternut squash, fresh beets. Like I said, a lot of it is vegetables, and if I liked vegetables, this would probably be a lot easier, <laughs> but I don't. Um, the best uh, you know, carb-rich fruits, uh, mangoes, plums, uh, blackberries, pineapples, oranges, bananas, cantaloupe, blueberries, apples, grapefruit, pears, um, 
those are all wonderful and I love fruits. The only thing you have to watch there for is you got to watch the sugar content on those natural sugars. Now, granted, your body's going to be able to burn through that a little bit better, but you're still adding sugar. So you have to be careful in what you eat, but those are fantastic for you. So I try to make sure that I work in, I, I especially love grapes and bananas, strawberries. You know, I, I really, really like those. I like pears all cut up and stuff there. Mangoes are good. Um, I, I try to I try to get those worked into my system as much as possible. And it's kind of like, you know, I eat a lot of cheese. Cheese. and cheese is actually high in the calorie content but I, I don't get a lot of other dairy besides the cheese and I got to make sure that my bones are strong enough so I eat a lot of cheese with that um, some of the best veggies uh, that I was able to find um, that are lower in carbs but they're they have a lot of good stuff in them nutrients and vitamins and everything else uh, peas carrots zucchini cucumbers mushrooms uh, tomatoes, asparagus, oh, can't, oh, I can't even do that one. <laughs> Kale, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, all the stuff on there, pretty much, you can write me off of. The only thing that I, that I would eat, uh, I do like green beans, I do like onions, uh, the rest of it can just, you can just chuck it out the window. <laughs> I will leave all of those vegetables for you guys. Since you guys like them, you please eat my portion of them all so they don't go to waste. But I, veggies are just not, not a good thing for me. So I, I just basically wanted to give you a little bit of an idea, kind of, you know, what you're kind of up against. These are the good carbs. Those are the ones that you want to work into your system. That's why they always say, you know, you need to eat more salads and stuff there because it will fill you up. And I do. And I do. I love a good chef salad. I know. And you're all probably just going, Sean, you just said you hate vegetables. Yes, I do. But I love a good chef salad because it's got meat and cheeses and eggs and everything else. And it's like, I can get through that. <laughs> and it's like, I'm sure you're all going out there just shaking your head going, really? How do you function? That's a very good question if you want to know the truth because people have tried to cook for me before and they've given up. I think I sent them to the crazy farm and they just had to just basically sit in a little padded room because like, you make no sense. You, you're contradictory. You like about eight things all together together give me my cheesy brats and i'll be happy I, you can just pretty much just leave me in my corner and i'll be fine <laughs> but you know the fruits and stuff I, I do like like i said the oranges and the and the bananas peaches grapes strawberries all of those things there um, those are carb rich fruits those are the good ones for you so i would say work some more of those in and that's what i try to do I, I, I try to keep as much as I can. So for the other thing that I wanted to talk about too was the protein. Like I said, I, I mean, I'm super heavy on the chicken, hamburger, ham, pork, uh, turkey, anything like that there. And I am, thanks to my son, and he keeps basically beating me over the head with it, I am actually starting to eat fish now. And if you've been listening since episode one, I pretty much said at that point, I don't like fish, but I was trying it. And I am getting better at it, um, thanks to him. And he prepares it differently. I don't know how he does it. I prefer not to know. <laughs> but I am getting better at liking fish. Um, but like protein wise for an eight ounce serving, I want, I went to the books to try to figure out because this is kind of what I go for to tell me how good I am. And remember, you shouldn't, you know, 40 grams at one meal is, is about all your body can process in an hour. I think it's, I think it's every, I think it's every two or four hours is what it is for protein wise. You can only take in so much. Your body can only process so much. So, you know, yes, being heavy on protein is fine, but I try to be careful with it. So I don't overshoot the mark so bad um, but like a pork loin it has 47 and a half grams of protein per eight ounces all of these are per eight ounces this is kind of what i go off of to help me through uh my weight loss journey uh a lean brisket 47 grams shrimp uh still not a fan but i'm trying 32 grams and this is remember this is all per eight ounces beef jerky 120 grams of protein you can really go crazy with that turkey jerky even better lower in calories and everything else and actually it's not that bad i didn't think i'd ever say that but you, we use ground turkey all the time for cooking and stuff 104 grams of protein per eight ounces it's incredible you can get a lot out of i mean it'll go a long way cod that's one thing that he keeps pushing on me and stuff there 40 grams for that uh lean green uh i'm sorry lean ground 
grass feed beef uh, it, with 96%. Of course, that's going to be a little more expensive, but you're going to keep the fats out of it. 48 grams. Salmon, 48 grams. Chicken breast, 30 grams. Lean bison, 46 grams. I mean, you can just go crazy with the protein. And that is what helps pull me through. So that way I'm not eating all the bad carbs. Now, like I said, do I still crave them? Of course. Do I have some carbs in my house? Yes, I've actually been able to integrate them back into the house a little bit. Not a ton of them, but I do have some sitting in the cupboard. So in the event that there's just, I either bought them out too far or the cravings become so intense that I have some. But when I have some, I have some on a limited basis. I basically keep it around. Um, one thing that I learned is, uh, thanks to my friend Rebecca, she taught me, when you get a craving, because she learned this from her doctors because she went through the weight loss surgery. And she learned from her doctors that when you get those cravings, the best thing to do is indulge them a little bit. Not a ton of it. I'm not saying go out and eat 6,000 calories of whatever you're craving but to have a little bit of it because you can eat around it. So you're hungry for it. Let's just use, let's just say you want, you want spaghetti. You can go out and have a salad or you can have broccoli or asparagus or whatever it is to try to make up for not having that spaghetti. But the problem is that craving stays there and it gets worse with time and longer and longer. And the more that it drives you nuts, the more you're going to eat to need to satisfy that thing. So one thing that I've learned, thanks to her, is... I, I go out and I satisfy that craving a little bit. Like I said, I don't have a lot of it. And now that I'm so far into my weight loss journey, honestly, it doesn't take as much to satisfy that craving. But the one thing is I don't hide from that craving anymore. I have a little bit. It's kind of like when I need some chocolate, I'll have a few chocolate chips or something like that there so I can keep the, the calories in it and the sugar content down. But it gives me that little bit of chocolate that I need need to basically get through. But it's, and remember, this is recommended from a doctor. This is what, I mean, this, this is actual doctor stuff here. So uh, they were said, just indulge the craving, but don't go crazy with it. And you have to be careful with it. I couldn't indulge those cravings and stuff. I'll be honest in the beginning. It just, it just could not happen because I, I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't, you know, I, there's just no way that I could get through it. Um, so I had to be really, really careful and keep them out. Now that I'm 21 months into my journey, I can actually work them back in a little bit and I don't go crazy. I mean, I, I'm really proud of myself because I can make up a bunch and it's not a bunch, but I make up some for, you know, Alex because he likes them because I want to make sure he takes good care of me and always is cooking everything for good for me. So there's just times that I know he wants comfort food. He's had a bad day or whatever. So I make the comfort food for him and I have a little bit of it, but I always make sure that I've got all my proteins lined up and ready to go. So I don't dig all the way into those carbs because carbs will will destroy everything, but you still have to have some. It, it, it's a weird, weird line that you have to walk. And like I said, I bet it took me four to six months to figure out where that line was. So that way I didn't over overkill on the mark when I absolutely had to have them and I was going crazy for them. I had to make sure that, you know, okay, I can only have so much, but I didn't want to take in too little because then I got my the cramps that came into my ribs and my legs and my arms and your muscles cramp up and you just don't function well because you're too low on carbs. So it took a little bit of time to figure out, okay, this is the happy medium where I didn't overkill on it, but I didn't underkill on it either. It, it, you just have to start listening to your body. Your body will tell you. And in the beginning, it's, it's all it wants is carbs. Rawr, 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 rawr. It's in the back of your head. Rawr, 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 carbs. And, and that's all it's going to say. So you have to get to a point where you say, no, we're not going to have them right now. We're going to be restrictive on them right now. And we will slowly work them back in a little bit down the road. And that's what I had to do. And that's what helped pull me through. Uh, for my weight loss journey was just working them in little by little and like I said it took me several months to figure out where that happy medium was it took time but given time and, and just say it okay I have to do this I'm going to do this I want to do this I'm gonna figure this out I'm gonna argue with my body until we come up with a happy medium we're going to come up with a truce and we're going to come up with a compromise and so that way i still lose the weight but yet it still gets the the 
carbs that it needs to keep going. So that's why I thought today, this whole episode, that's why this whole episode is dedicated to carbs. Now that you're probably sitting there, you're probably thinking, Sean, you did the exact opposite of what I needed you to do for my weight loss journey. (laughs) And I'll be honest, the whole time that I have been talking to you, I've been reading my notes on the screen and I'm going, oh man, I could go for some brownies right now or some cookies. (laughs) But just know it does get easier the longer you do this. You know, your body detox the cravings do go down I don't think they ever go away fully to be very honest with you Um, but I just know that I have a good firm hold on the cravings and and like I said there's there's two things that I hope you take away from it one is make sure you're mentally ready to go to start your weight loss journey I want you to in the worst way start your journey and I want you to get to a better place to where you're happy with yourself and you're happy with who you see in the mirror. But unless you're 100% committed to it, I'm asking you not to, just for the sole fact is, I don't want you to fail. I don't want, because I did it so many times and it, it all it did was make me feel like I'm a failure, like I couldn't do it because I was on a diet. I wasn't on a weight loss journey, I was on a diet and I felt like a failure. And it, it was it's that all or nothing thinking is either you did good, or you did horrible. There was no in between. And there is, you have to stick in the middle because you're not gonna be perfect all the time and be good all the time and you're not gonna be bad all the time. You still are gonna have days where you might slip a little bit. Don't be too hard on yourself because this is a long, long road that you gotta go down to. And for like me, I have to do this for the rest of my life. I don't have a choice because if I go off my weight loss journey, I'm gonna gain all my weight back and I don't wanna do that. I don't want to put those fat pants back on and those fat shirts back on. I want to keep going the right way. So there's there's a happy medium and you'll get there. And the second thing is just, you know, you're in it for the long haul. Just know you're in it for the long haul. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. So make sure you, you know, make the changes a little at a time. And like I said, to start, you might have to just do it at half power. I'm not arguing that point. And that's okay. Remember, any forward progress is forward progress. And that's exactly what you want to do to get yourself rocking and rolling. And I know you can do it. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I know you can do it. It's not, it's not the easiest but I know you can do it. I know you got you got the you got the willpower, you got the hood spot to be able to do it. And I'm proud of you. And I know you're going to do it when you're ready. But I'm not saying I'm not trying to upset any of the doctors out there or the dietitians or anything like that. I'm not trying to upset them by telling you don't do it if you're not mentally ready to go for it. I'm not trying to get a bunch of hate mail for it. What I'm saying is I don't want you to go through the depression and I don't want you to go through feeling like you're a quitter or a loser because you you weren't able to stick to a diet or the yo-yo diets. This is a weight loss journey and it's going to take time. But I, want, I, honest to God, I want you to be able to cross that finish line and be happy with who you see and happy that you got there. And it's going to take time. So um, I'm hoping that today's carb <laughs> episode doesn't leave you hungrier than I am starving. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I got to go find some chicken. I got to go find some cheese. I got to go find something. I am now hungry. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I made you hungry. But I wanted to talk about carbs. There are good carbs out there. Make sure you work them into your system and make it work them into your weight loss journey. So I can see by the time on the on my monitor, I'm over again. Uh, so um, I want to take us into now the dad joke of the day. And remember, like I said at the beginning, this is a listener submitted joke. So I can't thank Mary enough for listening into the podcast. And now, you know, this is, I think this is the second dad joke of the day that she submitted. So thank you so much. So if you guys got dad jokes you want me to, to put on here and stuff there, submit them, email them to me. I'd love to hear from you there. That would be fantastic. So if you guys are ready to go and you're ready to roll your eyes and start groaning at another fantastic dad joke, here we go. Do you know what you give a pig with a rash? Oinkment. <laughs> I about fell over when I read that one from Mary. That is fantastic. That is so good. Thanks so much, you guys, for listening. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and share with everybody that you know because we're growing and we're getting a little bit bigger. So thanks so much for listening. And as always, all my love and support, Sean.